Hi folks, Dan Bell here. Today I'm going to go over timesheet setup and usage in Project Online. We've been getting some questions about this lately and when I demonstrated I noticed I got a number of interesting questions and thought, hey, why not uh, do a video on this and kind of you know, get, the, get the functionality out there so people can see it again. Uh, so they can they can be a little bit for, more familiar with it. I'm um, going to go over the configuration very briefly as well as followed by a demonstration on the timesheet functionality. And then lastly, we'll go ahead and take a quick look at the licensing as well. All right. So first, let's look at the settings, server settings in the bottom left here. And then we have a couple things here. We have task settings and display as well as timesheet settings and default. And uh, we'll go ahead and open those up. In task settings and display, a couple things here. Under tracking method, hours of work done per period is what we recommend using here. Resources report their hours worked on each task per period, right? And then we're gonna go ahead and define the period. Uh, reporting display, resources should report their hours worked every single day, right? So those are the two basic settings here. Uh, one more setting that we, we do also sometimes recommend using depending on, um, you know, the way people update their projects is that only allow task updates via tasks and timesheets. Uh, reason being is because sometimes when you're updating your project schedule, not you know, certain people that updating, um, you may inadvertently update the actual work and you're not knowing it or don't realize it. And when you have this checked like so, um, you will not be able to update the actual work. You actually won't be able to save your project in Microsoft Project Professional. It can be a little frustrating, but it's also very enlightening. Uh, so it really teaches you some very good habits as to how to update your project, right? That's the settings there with regard to timesheet settings and defaults. What do we do here? Well, uh, the default timesheet creation mode, this is strictly for the visibility of the team member is, you know, what do you want to show up on their timesheet by default? Well, I want to see their current task assignments. That, that makes sense, right? The other options are no uh, current projects or no pre-population. Timesheet grid column units. This is basically what it shows up as and the, 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 the cells in which you're able to enter the increments in. Uh, it's actually set up into days, which is preferred. Hours are gonna be entered in those day cells, right? Which just makes the most sense. Do we wanna allow future time reporting? Yeah, that's the best way to do it. Uh, especially if you're using operational tasks as well. If you want people to forecast upcoming training a couple weeks in advance or forecast their vacation time and so forth, it's always good to allow future time reporting. Then lastly, single entry mode. Uh, this is great. Absolutely want to use this because this is going to enable you to use your timesheet for your one-stop shop, both administrative operational activities as well as project-related tasks. There is your setup. Pretty straightforward stuff. <clears throat> now... Let's go ahead and create a, a super simple project. My Microsoft Projects open and it's connected to that instance. And I'm going to do my wonderful design, build, test, deploy here. You can do five day durations across the board. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and change the start date of this project to the 26th. So I'll make them all start on the 26th. Now I'm going to build the team. And I'm going to add me to the team as well as one other user. Uh, there's myself and there's the other user. I'm going to add both of these users to the team. I'm going to assign just me to the first three, like so. And then I'm going to assign myself and Dan Shackelford to the last task. And you can see all the assignments look good so far. If I were to add the work column here, you can see the, oh, yeah, that's the wrong column. Let's add to the work column. We'll try that again. 40 hours across the board, except for the last one, eight hour, 80. That's because two resources are assigned to it. Five day duration, 40 hours per resource in this case. Right, pretty simple stuff. Let's go ahead and save this. We'll save it as my timesheet project demo. Oh, if only I could type today. Here's my timesheet demo project. We save it and then we follow the save by publish because until we publish those tasks are not going anywhere, right? Uh, we'll go ahead and say we do not want to see this again, nor do we want to create a project site. This is only a test. Don't need to see that. Bottom right is where we can always see the status. You can see the publish at 7% complete. Yeah, many times it goes from, from 7 to 25 to 100 or completed successfully, whatever. Uh, there it goes. Completed successfully. All done. Let's navigate file. Close. Do you want to check it in? Yes, I do. There you go. Now we'll go back to Project Web App. Okay. 
And just for now this time, just pretend now I have my team member hat on. I perform some work on a project and I'm gonna to navigate to my timesheet and perform some entry of work, right? So when I navigate here, So I've done some work on my project, navigate to Project Web App, click on the timesheet link to get to my timesheet. I'm gonna get to some actual work against some tasks here. There is my timesheet demo project, right? Design, build, test, deploy. Remember deploy is the one in which we had two resources assigned, right? I'm gonna start in order in which the tasks were in the project. That means I'm gonna start with the design task. We'll enter eight, 16, 24, right? Against this particular one. And notice that it says remaining work, right? It still says zero, 0% 0 complete, um, and then zero actual. And that's because I've not submitted or saved this time yet. I have to click the save button for anything to happen here in the timesheet. And once I do, then we're gonna see these metrics over here change to reflect what I entered in the grid. And there we go. So now we see 16 remaining because I entered 24 of 40. 60% of that 40 hours has been complete and an actual work reflects 24 hours have been submitted so far, okay? Okay, so we'll go from design to build. Let's do the same thing. It's 24 hours, okay? No, again, nothing's changed here. That's because, right, we have to click the save button. Once we click save, we should see it to go to 16 remaining, 60% uh, percent complete, right, and 24 actual. And um, what we're gonna do with this one is, is take a little bit different scenario. So there we go, right? The build, like we said, 16 hours remaining, 60% complete, 20 hours actual. But what we recognize is that the task is more complex than we originally thought. Instead of 16 hours remaining, there are 32. In order to reflect that and communicate that to the project manager, we update remaining work to 32, right? So again, what do we do? We save and we'll see percent work complete change and we'll see the work change the scheduled work okay 43 percent percent work complete 56 hours of scheduled work that was the 40 bumped up by 16 to 56 okay now we go to the test task right same thing 16 24 we save and again we're see, see the same thing happen here remaining work will go to our 16 this will go to 60 24 hours of actual Okay, there we go, no surprises so far. This scenario will be, hey, we worked on this task, we were able to finish it early with less effort than we actually initially expected. Therefore, we're going to zero out the remaining work here, save again, right? And this time we should see actual work stay at 40. Work is gonna to change to match actual work because now there's not 40 hours of scheduled work, but rather 24 because we zeroed out the remaining work percent work complete will go to 40, right? There we go. And then last but not least, uh, we have the design task. And what we're gonna do is enter 40 hours, okay? And that, again, uh, that's our deploy task. We're gonna save that. We should see percent work complete go to 100, okay? Remaining work to zero. Actual work's gonna change to 40, which is gonna ma uh, match the scheduled work of 40. Okay, uh, the, the, quite, the, the only reason I'm doing this is because I want to point out that <clears throat> Project Online is smart enough to recognize that, well, Dan, you know, he didn't complete the entire task. He completed his work on that task in which two people are assigned. Dan Shackelford still has 40 hours remaining here. Okay, when you're done with these timesheets, and you know, we use these here, uh, I, I'll submit mine multiple times throughout the day. You, know, you would do that as well if you wanted to, but uh, I'm just submitting them here. Send progress for all tasks. That means all these items, right, those four that we made a changes to are now sitting in the project manager's uh, approval section in Project Web App to review and approve. And since I happen to be the project manager as well, I can navigate to approvals and go ahead and take a look at those, right? And here they are. And I have a grouped by project here. You can see the project, the timesheet project demo. There are the four tasks. Okay, I can see the type of updates, the transaction comments, the sent date, the start and finish. And then look at these items in red. The red is wonderful because the red actually shows me, hey, what did the team member update? And there you go, right? The team member entered 24, 40, 24, 24. Oh, in addition to that, the team member is telling me that uh, they, they bumped, they changed the remaining work 
on this particular task, right? Okay, so if, if you remember, 40 hours was scheduled. Uh, the team member bumped that up by 16, and now instead of 16 remaining, there's 32, okay? Um, what, other, what other change happened? Well, the team member changed the remaining work on this one to zero. You do, as a project manager, have the option to preview these changes. I can select all, and then click on preview updates. And when I preview those updates, it's basically a before and after picture of what's going to happen to my project. Gantt chart's pretty telling uh, in certain instances. You can tell this task is gonna take longer. This one's completed earlier, okay? The other thing you can look as well is, all right, previous duration, all fives. The duration after I accept these, okay? Five goes from five to seven, five to three, it stays at five, okay? Interesting. Um, so, so it's really interesting and very helpful if you want to, to see the changes before you actually accept them. Okay. When you are ready to accept the changes, check the items, click the accept button. You'll get a little dialog box here that uh, will be just a confirmation. You can enter a transaction note if you want. I'm not going to. And then once the changes have been accepted, there's going to be some updates that take place in the cloud database. Um, then I can subsequently navigate back to Project Pro as the project manager. I'm going to go browse. Uh, actually, let's do this. We'll go back here to recent timesheet project demo <clears throat> and uh, we'll go ahead and look at the work breakdown structure okay and what we're going to do is add the actual work column we'll add the remaining work column okay and again like you saw just a couple moments ago the one that i didn't change the remaining work i left it at 16 the one i bumped it by 16 to come to 32 the one that i flattened it out or zero it out from 16 to zero. And the one that I didn't do anything to it, I just entered my 40 hours of actual work. There's 40 remaining because Dan Shackelford, right, who's right there, is assigned to the other 40 hours on that 80 hour task, if you recall, right? And another way you can confirm that as well is if you go to a task usage view, right? Here's the deploy task, there's me, there's Dan Shackelford, 40 each, right? And then you can see over here in the grid, eight hours across the board for each of us, right? And that's basically how the timesheets work. Very, very robust in Project Online. With regard to licensing, uh, you know, for your project managers, um, you're probably going to use most often uh, a three. Some will need a five, depending on if they're going to use resource enterprise resource management. Uh, also, you'll need it for demand management as well as a portfolio analysis. Uh, for the team members, you know, the folks uh, entering time, uh, entering calendar exceptions, managing documents, issues and risks, right? Uh, collaborating on those types of things, viewing the project that they're a part of. Yeah, they can, they can use an essentials license and you don't see this license advertised on the Microsoft website. Uh, and um, it's my hunch that you don't is because you must own a three or a five before you can actually own an essential. So it's not a standalone. But this particular screenshot that you see here is in the Office 365 portal. When you go into purchase services, that's where it is available. $9 per team member versus the 30 and 55 for your other resource roles, okay? Awesome, folks. Well, thanks so much for attending. Hope you enjoyed and learned something out of this. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions for other videos, I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, have a fabulous day. Thanks again.